Is everybody fed up of the hype around AI? Yeah, okay, okay. So tonight we're going to do some hype busting, okay? So good evening, everyone. Um, everyone in this room carries a reputation. A good reputation, I'm sure. An excellent reputation, no doubt. Would anyone disagree with that? <laughs> Um, but a reputation that has probably been honed through education, through doing good things, through doing the right things, through working hard, through um, associating yourselves with other people of good repute at events like this, or even indeed working for companies with excellent brands, which is really the modern name for reputation. But. Reputation is a bit of a fickle thing. You've probably spent years developing that reputation, and it can disappear in a moment. It can disappear in the click of a button, as this well-known gentleman says here. And it can do. In our information age, things change very quickly. And information, which is organizations collateral, as we all know, um, can be lost in a moment. And there are multiple examples of people going in, hackers going in and getting that confidential information, or ourselves accidentally sending it out. So, how can AI protect your reputation? So over the next five minutes, I'm not going to tell you how it's going to increase your great reputation. You're good enough at that as it is, I'm sure, but how it's going to keep it from falling, is what I hope. A practical use of AI, or how machine learning may simply save your neck. So as I've been introduced, I'll admit to you, I am not a journalist. I'm not a hack. I don't work for a news company. I, I work for a law firm um, as a technologist. And uh, I look at lawyers and think, their business is based on reputation. It's all about reputation, confidential information, probably very much like your own, actually. And as Kai says, has anyone ever sent an email to the wrong email address? Of course you have, either domestically or professionally. We've all done it, haven't we? But the, uh, the thing about misaddressed emails is nobody does it intentionally. So by the very nature of it, you don't know you've done it. But occasionally, you might wake up Maybe at 3 o'clock in the morning, your heart pounding. Maybe a bead of sweat going, I think I sent that to the wrong John Smith. Oh, no. Or maybe you've come into work the next day, and you've got that subtly titled email sat there in your inbox going, was this meant for me? <laughs> oh, if you've ever been there, your heart just sinks. You just hope that your reputation is not sinking as fast. And that's what all of this is about. So, according to the people that know, the ICO misaddressed emails are the number one uh, data security incident reported to them. The number one. Here we go, here's the graph. Do you know all that cyber phishing and all that stuff we'll hear about? Hey, it's at the bottom. Right at the top is misaddressed emails. What I think is really sad about this, I don't know if you can see it, is loss of paperwork is number two. Aren't we in the 20, 21st century? Maybe we're not. Anyway, so that's, that's a bit disappointing to see that one so high up. But anyway, um, so the company that I work out, uh, we are a medium-sized law firm. We have 1,000 uh, people working for us. And we send out every month about half a million emails. OK? Nothing unusual in that. How many of those? put the firm at risk is a risk perhaps that we don't know maybe that's the risk so according to industry statistics 0.42 percent really small number of emails goes to the wrong address that's 0.4 percent so is that a problem I can see some of you are now doing the maths aren't you so 500,000 0.4 Okay, that, so that's over 2,000. Okay, that's a big number. Okay, uh, yeah, that is a problem. Or even a, a lesser number. What that means is 1,000 people in my firm are sending 500,000 emails a month. What that means is each person is sending 500 emails a month. 
Okay, about 100 a week going out. Okay, about 20 a day going out. I'm sure we can all identify with that number. 20 emails a day, that's not bad. So what that means at our level is we are all probably sending at least two misaddressed emails a month out that carry your good reputation. You don't do it intentionally. You probably don't know you've done that many, but there it is. So, what do we want? We want protection of our reputation. When do we want it? We want it now, of course. We don't want any change to work in practice. Whatever you do, you just keep doing. You want this uh, AI-based fantastic thing to give you an intelligent warning that you can understand, not some PhD from Stanford University with an IT degree, blah, blah, blah. No, just us working as we do. Um, something that learns from usage, okay? It learns about you and how you work. So it knows when you are probably going to send uh, a wrong email to the wrong place. And some statistics would be good. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is it. So here I am. I'm going to send an email to Sam at the accountancy company, okay? It's to do with Project Tornado, which is a really, really confidential thing for the firm. So here I go, dear Samuel, blah, 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 hit send. Now, the AI in a microsecond has gone, woo, okay, this, Duncan, is the first time that you sent an email concerning Project Confidential Tornado to Sam at the accountants. Are you sure you don't mean Sam at the bank? Oh, and by the way, you never call Sam at the bank, uh, uh, Sam at the accountancy, um, Sam, you, you always call him Sam. So I think I'm just about to save your neck. Got it right. Thank you very much. No need to wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning or get that funny email. It's as simple and practical as that. So actually, if you are looking for a simple and practical AI that without any hype may actually help you, that from day one is going to work, this is used by thousands of lawyers every single day, whose reputation is what it's all about. Oh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, that was your training course, by the way. That's it. That is it. So, how much is your reputation worth? If I said to you, for the price of a cup of coffee per month, this can protect your reputation. It's not hundreds of millions of pounds and AI and blah, blah, blah. It's actually quite practical. Practical AI for a practical price that's going to save your reputation. That, ladies and gentlemen, is my seven minutes. Thank you very much. Um, I think you, um, you might have been kind of expecting this question as you're talking to a bunch of journalists. Now, I'm assuming that either it's in the works or it's already a feature, there is a way of, um, well, a ledger that records sort of, uh, I wouldn't say suspicious, but, you know, misdirected emails, because if, you know, something goes, um, you know, um, uh, wrong in the project, it's useful to just pull, okay, let's see who, you know, sent the email, you know, why, why they're suing us, worst case scenario. Now, well, what happens if I want to blow the whistle on something that happens at my bank? What happens if I'm at Lloyd's and the uh, Reading branch of HBOS is doing something really, really bad, and not only have got my whole board against me, but, you know, this thing records when I, I mean, I'm, obviously there's a way of pulling the records or without that thing. But I don't know, I, I, I do, I'm assuming you have, but how have you thought about the implications of this? Also, on the last uh, uh, slide, that coffee, was it an Americano, an espresso? A that's, that's down to your negotiating skills, my friend. <laughs> um, but, but to answer your question, a really good question, by the way, is um, both the legal sector and the banking sector is heavily regulated. So ignoring this, everything coming in and out, including viruses, is audit, tracked, trailed, kept, blah, 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 all of that sort of thing. So to answer your question directly, if you probably wanted to secretly blow the whistle, you'd do it outside of that infrastructure. Um, to answer what I think was probably your second question, if the AI pops up and goes, hey, Duncan, I think you're about to make a mistake, are you sure? You can actually override it. The user is always in control and go, yes, I'm sure. 
hit fire, hit send, yeah. Um, going back to your introduction, from an organizational point of view, um, the organization does get statistics. So for example, and I'm in technology, um, I can go to the risk team and say, so Duncan, how many uh, misaddressed emails did we potentially uh, have this month, but we then saved? Uh, so those statistics are available. Uh, you could say, oh, it, it seemed to be emanating from that team there, or indeed it might be that individual. Who's that guy? He's new. So actually, he hasn't really got the hang of it yet. So, so this can be used for the greater good, it, it, is what we're saying, yeah. But the user's always in control. So. Do we have one more quick question? Because we are actually already running a bit late. Our fault for not starting on time. But um, I think you had three questions. <laughs> Anyhow, is there another one that you want to answer? Oh, no, if there is another one, yeah, if there is, yeah. Okay, in the middle there. Oh, could you just wait for wait for the mic? Hey. Um, you mentioned that when a, that, that a user can override um, an email. I'm wondering what you do with that data, and if that's applied um, on an organisation level in terms of the machine learning, or if that then feeds back to the central hub. Um, it, it does both. So you might say um, there are 50 warnings this month, and of those 50, the user has said, let it out 10 times. So they've stopped it 40 times. So you might say, that's saved 40 next, but got it wrong 10 times, then the algorithm plays back into it. Yeah. Um, it can do something else, actually, as, as this thing gets cleverer. So for example, and this, this sounds a bit uh, mischievous, perhaps, is if somebody was leaving the firm, and you knew they were leaving the firm, this can identify sensitive content going to um, an email address that wouldn't be considered professional. So it go, hey, are you sure you want to do that? Now, if HR said, we, this guy is leaving, it could stop that person sending it, i.e. protecting the firm's collateral, leaving the organization with that person. So it's all about protection of reputation. Whose reputation in that case? Probably the firms rather than the individuals, but there you go. So 